Mayday was a clone commander who served in the Grand Army of the Republic and later under the fist of the Empire. He was stationed on the icy world of Barton IV for more than a year alongside his men Hex and Veach. Their mission was to protect a large shipment of crates for the Empire at an outpost on the planet. Unfortunately, he lost most of his men in raider attacks that were targeting the outpost and its resources. An Imperial lieutenant named Nolan was assigned to Barton IV 36 days after Commander Mayday expected him to arrive. Along with Nolan was a genetically altered clone commando named Crosshair. They were sent to assist with protecting the high-value cargo from the insurgents until the end of the week when they would be transporting the crates. While patrolling the perimeter of the outpost, Mayday explained the Crosshair that their equipment had been deteriorating and their supplies run thin. Mayday pointed out these vicious birds called Ice Vultures and told the clone commando that he shouldn't go off anywhere on his own. Their conversation was interrupted when they heard blaster fire followed by Veach over the radio telling the commander he spotted raiders inside the perimeter. Mayday immediately instructed Crosshair to cover the west side of the base while he covered the east. Before Crosshair could get into position at the top of the guard tower, Veach yelled over the comms that Hex was taken out. Veach then pursued some of the raiders to the shuttle parked outside. However, instead of trying to steal the shuttle, one of the raiders actually detonated the craft, taking Veach and himself out in the process. Using the heat vision from his rangefinder, Crosshair was momentarily blinded by the light of the explosion. He instinctively yanked his helmet off of his head because his eyes felt like they were burning. Before he could recover from the flash, he still managed to target and maim one of the fleeing raiders. The commando then put his helmet back on and went to investigate the wreckage. Once he was down by the destroyed shuttle, Crosshair found blood from the raider he shot and tracked him to an underground tunnel system. Mayday met Crosshair near the entrance of the tunnels. There they discovered this was the route that the raiders had been using to bypass the outpost sensors. They went back to base to recover and that's when Lieutenant Nolan forced the two clones to go out by themselves and retrieve the two crates that were stolen during the raid. After passing by the deceased raider that Crosshair shot before, the commando accidentally stepped onto a pressure mine. I guarantee he missed his brother Wrecker here because Mayday admitted to not being an expert with explosives before he started working to disarm the device. With limited resources, he used a hammer and three small pieces of angle iron to keep the pressure on the mine. The commander told Crosshair to wait until he was clear to step off of the mine. Mayday made his way around the corner and Crosshair slowly lifted his foot off of the device. Luckily, there was no explosion meeting Mayday was successful in temporarily disarming it. The two clones made their way through the tunnel and discovered the raider camp they were looking for hiding in the mountains. Crosshair scoped out the place with his rifle on their way to the camp and targeted two guards out on watch. Together they infiltrated the entrance to the camp and while remaining undetected they each took out a guard as quietly as possible. Now Mayday and Crosshair had enough time to plot a surprise attack and get into position. Crosshair started the fight by using a stun grenade to incapacitate a small group of the raiders. Then the pair started firing on the raiders, killing them off one by one until Commander Mayday started to get overrun by the enemy. Crosshair quickly shot the raiders surrounding Mayday and then he fired on a stack of the same pressure mines he stepped on earlier. The mines blew up, taking out the remaining raiders and burying them in a small avalanche from above the camp. This snowfall also launched the cargo crates they were sent to retrieve into the valley below. One thing I didn't mention before was the fact that the clone troopers were forbidden from even opening the crates that they were guarding. With the cargo strung out all over the ground, Mayday discovered that the cargo he had been guarding all along was actually brand new armor that the Empire didn't want the clones using. Crosshair immediately recognized the helmets to be TK troopers who were the Empire's solution to replace the clones with conscripts from around the galaxy. Mayday comes to the realization that all his men died for nothing and gave us this chilling quote. After all the clones have done, all we've sacrificed, we're good soldiers. We followed orders. And for what? Before Crosshair could think of a response, the mines he fired on finally caused an even larger residual avalanche right above the clones. 
As the snow came crashing down, the two made a run for some protruding rocks, presumably to use for cover. Mayday realized it was too late to make it to the rock and heroically pushed Crosshair out of the way, saving the clone commando from getting crushed between a rock and a hard place. Buried but still conscious, Crosshair pulled himself from the snow and trudged over to the rock where Mayday likely landed. Crosshair dug up the severely injured commander and woke him up. Mayday tells Crosshair to go on without him, However, the hardened clone commando threw Mayday's helmet back on him and helped him walk through the blizzard. Their journey was treacherous and they were being tracked down by one of the ice vultures Mayday mentioned before. Knowing they couldn't survive walking through the night, Crosshair found a large rock where they could take cover. He huddled up to Mayday, keeping each other warm enough to live through the night and survive the storm. Upon reaching the outpost in the morning, Crosshair begged Lieutenant Nolan to call for a medic to come and save Mayday's life. Sadly, Nolan refused to help, telling Crosshair that it would have been a waste of the Empire's resources. Right there on the tarmac, Mayday passed away, and Crosshair was devastated that the Imperial Lieutenant just stood there and did nothing as one of his brothers died. This was also one of the only regular clones that Crosshair ever got along with. He saw the shadow of the creature as a false world he's created for himself. When he looked up to the Vulture clearly for the first time, he snapped back to reality and called out to Lieutenant Nolan. Once Nolan turned to face Crosshair, he was holding his blaster at the ready and killed the Lieutenant with a shot to the chest. 